Hello. Thanks for rolling with that. I, I uh, was out walking in the rain and I'm finding myself in a little bit of disrepair. No problem. Hey there. You good? You gotta adjust, adjust your spaceship controls? Yes, just getting everything set up. How are you? I, I'm good. I like it's probably a little dark in here, but um, and I have decidedly got pandemic hair. Ah. <laughs> There's always one problem, isn't there? You don't have that one. <laughs> so, so you said we got 15 minutes. No, we we have more. I just didn't want to ask of you, you know, more than Basically, I was just going to share this this idea with you, but yeah, we don't have any limits, really. Okay. Okay, so you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Um, it occurred to me, you know, I loved our game. I loved your game, and of course, I was immediately thinking of ways to apply and how I could help. You know, if if you ever want to pick my brain, I'm absolutely honored to brainstorm with you. Um, so a couple of days after our talk, I've been involved in these conversations at uh, the Nantucket Project with a pandemic expert who heard three different presidents um, and my friend, old friend Tom Scott, who created the Nantucket Project, which is like a TED talk, you know, but it, it goes over the course of four days and they have these phenomenal speakers and I've been able to participate in it twice. So because this guy, R. P. Eddy is, is a political expert as well, he's advised three, the three presidents on various things, including pandemic plans, et cetera. Um, he and Tom are often engaged in political discussions and I've been weighing in just as a friend. And there's one particular person who comes on to a decidedly, uh, you know, uh, liberal podcast is a very conservative person. He is a conspiracy theorist and very much from the far right. And he sort of trolls the conversation and that's fine. Everyone is welcome and everyone is addressed with as much respect as the two hosts can muster in the, in the chat underneath the podcast. So uh, no one has ever been like sent away or whatever. But this particular guy will jump on to every person who comments and say, you know, sort of belligerent things like, well, prove it. And, you know, it's just kind of not in the mainstream, uh, not using the same news sources, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, this is something that both the right and the left are engaged in deeply in America, these brawls, you know, across social media. They're very, sometimes they're very explicit. Sometimes there's a lot of name calling. It's, it can get super ugly, super fast. And um, I've been cyber bullied. I know what that's like. And uh, I've been trying like heck to figure out if it were Palestine and Israel, if it were Ireland and England, you know, all of the places of conflict, some, some people I'm involved with who are dealing with those things. Um, one of my good friends is a peacekeeper, a Syrian peacekeeper. He was a world fellow at Yale, trying to figure out how to assist Syria. So this idea of conflict in uh, how to create peace and conflict conflict-ridden areas, right, has been prevalent in my mind for at least a decade. So here it is in this form, which is red versus blue in America. And then here it is in this place, in a place that kind of means something to me, my friend's podcast, and always having these bitter uh, battles, particularly from this guy. So I thought, what if we took your tool like one of its applications just you know and you're up and running and again i apologize so much for that was really a freaking dumb 
dangerous mistake I made, and I really apologize for that. No problem. But, but um, nonetheless, that was my bad, and uh, I let the ball drop on being completely responsible for your project and properly. I just was, uh, like I said, I, I, I thought you were saying that this aspect of it was up and running, and I don't know why I thought that. That's okay. So, thanks for forgiving me. So we take, so obviously many applications for in, in this world, in this time we're living in for your, you know, your beautiful oracle. But what if we target, we meaning, I'm just elbowing my way into your, <laughs> into your project. Um, what if one of the applications could be to uh, mediate such disputes, not, not disputes, but, but a tool, it's the wrench in the machine is what I'm saying. The wrench that stops the paradigm of debate, war, one-upsmanship that's been going on for all of, you know, throughout all of humanity that I certainly am trying to disrupt, right? To disrupt, to disrupt the trajectory that is a downward spiral and, and jump the shark into something else. So that we need tools to uh, disrupt that trajectory. And somehow, if we could figure out a way to match both sides, match a person, you know, a, a conservative with a, a liberal, match a Palestinian with an Israeli. And all, a lot of this work is happening anyway. But that there'd be certain rules, like my rules of engagement are pretty good, uh, assume the infinite nature of the other conversant and try to find the piece of the puzzle that you provide to each other, right? And then we introduce your um, oracle and you take certain things off the table, like if the conflict is territory related, you, you you have certain restrictions like it it's a game that has rules like any game right there are certain things you are allowed to have at and certain things and maybe the things that we restrict them from are things that get introduced as you go through certain steps in the game so you progress in the game and you show yourself to be able to you know negotiate rocky territory by using the tools and then like the highest level of the game is real conflict resolution and so that you've already discussed a number of other things like you know what animals whatever you, you take some of the questions you're you're building relationship you're getting a certain understanding of each other and so you eliminate the first roadblock which is to define the other as the other and as on the other side. And then you keep using the tools up through the ranks with, and I'm sure you've already, you already have thought a lot of this through, but that um, tools of mediation come into play um, at some of the higher levels. Anyway, so that was just, my thought was, if we could use it as an active tool and find a way to match, do like a match game instead of a love match, like a, um, how do we find similarities between opposing, uh, seemingly opposing sides? And, and we just ask for volunteers that you are allowed to talk about, you're not allowed to talk about that. And here's, here's the rules of engagement and here's the divination tool and go. So that's, that's it. <laughs> okay. Um, that was, it was just an idea I wanted to share with you. That's all. And okay. You can chuck it or whatever, right? whatever you want. Well, no, I mean, ideas are amazing things. And I, I guess there's a difference between an idea and wanting to run with an idea. Oh, and, yeah. and then the work that actually has to go into the idea. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, ideas are very easy to have, but yeah. you know, that's the start of any, uh, you know, implementation. You have the uh, idea. How about how about this? Let me um, let me try something here. Yeah. Let me share the screen. Yes, boss. And let me. Oh, where? Just wait a second. Oh. like 
the troll under the bridge right now. <laughs> well, okay. I have brought you an idea that you are okay. thinking, I don't know, does this chick know anything about implementing an idea? Okay, so let's, um, let's write a question. Okay. And maybe the question is, um, I have to turn my timer on because I've got something in the oven that I'm going to need to snatch out. How to um, maybe build the best conflict resolution tool? Well, I think you have the certainly, uh, you know, quite a few layers of it. Okay, so how to build the best, I mean, that's, that could be one question, but another question might be how to create a conversation between two, because what I'm hearing is two opposite people, like, let's say, if there's some methodology, again, as you said, as an Israeli and a Palestinian or Republican and conservative, or whoever has an opposing viewpoint to come together, but then have a divination conversation rather than just your normal discussion. That's what I kind of heard from you. To connect the purpose would be to connect but really you already have this question answered it would what would what would have to be created is a match system for opposing pe people who are willing to engage well I, well I think what would be you know a, a great app would be a rand like I mean there's two things there's a random connection between two people that throws you into this this uh actually maybe a chat room or, or even a video Zoom where you do have the, the parameters of the conversation in the spell, like the remedies there. Now they have to figure it out together. That I, I love that. I mean, just by itself. I think there's, there's a difference between any two random people coming in versus people who program their own parameters in. And then because of the parameters, they're matched with someone to match that. I think that's, that's genius. But Let's just, is this a good question to ask? Is this? Well, pa pause for one minute. We'll go right to that in a sec. I, I love what you just said because what you just humanized it and you pointed out the necessity for stages of introduction because mm. I think we've got to get people into the room and from then ask them if they'd like to do an experiment and do, do this. Like, Even if it, even if it was, even if the match system was fully formed, and then your system is fully formed, there's the approach and the invite to the system that is not. And I think that probably, from what you just said, has to come in stages. Like you have a gathering, you suss out. Oh, we've got some differing opinions. Would you like to use this tool to find common ground? Mm. So, I see it as two systems operating. You know? Yeah, I mean, the, and an introductory system. Well, and, and even if you go like this is just like one tool, and then there's a whole bunch of tools in what I call the new paradigm toolkit. You'll see that you'll <laughs> there's when, when you get into multi dimensional thinking and design, right. you know, there's no end to it, really. And so one of the, the most important things, at least what I've seen is, you know, how to focus, you know, on actually creating something that's functional that works. And that's, this is, like this is the result of, of having someone who, as a programmer, Noah, who just said, okay, I sent the design, let's go back and forth and having sort of like designer programmer. So it's the first time I've had some software, someone who could, who knows programming, who could actually do what I was trying to do, right? So yeah. but let know, me- All this is, is it just a, a specific application to the general desire that you have that, that caused your invention to be invented? but to use it as that specific wrench to stop the machine of separation. So yeah, go ahead to your question. Okay, so the question is how to build the best conflict resolution tool. And here we have there it is. this to value moral excellence and or high degree of competence, synchronizing to discover how to coordinate the time schedules so you're in sync with each other and repatterning a reappraisal of history to create a truer recounting of the events that occur to better understand the present and lead to a more balanced future. So yeah, and 
goodness one is perfect because that's where my assume the infinite nature of the other c comes into play. Like you, you have to find, it's almost like you have to find the goodness in the other person. That's really the game. Mm. And synchronizing is basically what we were taught. I mean, how do you bring two people together? How do you synchronize people in time? How do you align them so they're actually in the same place at the same time? That's match part of the game. And repatterning, that's like, to me, that's another word for history. Mm -hmm. That's like the new paradigm word for history because a lot of history is sort of based upon, you know, there's a lot of conniving. <laughs> Yes, history. it's re-seeing history. Sorry to interrupt. It's re-patterning is a way of saying like, okay, we know our history, but let's let's take it from here. So again, going how to build the best conflict resolution tool if both parties have goodness. Well, you have, as you say, you have to have that goodness implied or that people going in. Because I think with a lot of conflict, right, as soon as you really communicate, you can get to the heart of it, but a lot of times people, they don't want to communicate. Like it's, it's a big stage to want to get into that conflict resolution. So if people have goodness as their highest aim and everyone coming into it has goodness, then that certainly would have a different effect on the, the whole the goal, idea. If the goal is locating the goodness in the other, because mm. What, mm. That's, so that's primary, mm. locating the goodness in the other. However, not to get caught on this, but there's psychological service to our other and somebody else. It means that we can cast ourselves as better, smarter, uh, more in touch with whatever reality we think we're in touch with. There's, it's, we have to realize that the idea that other person's being bad serves us. Mm. There's only one way to eliminate and erase the effects of that, which is to set on the path of finding it's treasure, you know, it's the Holy grail, but you're, you're seeking the Holy grail in somebody else. Mm. I got to grab this out of the oven. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. It's going to take me 30 seconds, <laughs> maybe 40. Yeah, Pres presume the infinite nature, assume, is it presume or assume? assume the infinite nature of the other is a way of saying, find the treasure just in the other person. Find the goodness. Mm -hmm. Synchronizing, it's perfect, right? That's the match part of the game. And then together you, you re, history you re-pattern you, you interrupt the pattern exactly mm. hey brilliant uh, uh, oracle you got there friend <laughs> it worked it worked <laughs> that it's it's actually <clears throat> a perfect it's a perfect uh formula well it's it's uh i mean there's like basically 400 variables coming together like there's a you're choosing from about 400 possibilities right yeah. and that of course can create almost billions of combinations of that 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 trinity of of what you're getting at but i believe you i, I listen i know that i have the fingernail clipping of your i just assume your infinite project <laughs> <laughs> i do well what what I found was when you when you move information to cards, and you get away from the normal way of grammar, and you start to arrange things in sacred geometry, it it's amazing the amount of possibilities, and it just it changes how the mind sees, it changes how we perceive the world, and it's uh, it's just fascinating, you know, like like look at that a random like if, if we could not have you know we could have spent three hours trying to figure that one out. But all of a sudden you have something random and then well i did say it though i did lay it out 
you know, you, you need to aim at the infinite nature of the other. You need a match game to put them together. And then together they have to uh, arrive at each other's goodness, which is unity. But mm. the, the game limit is in a question is pretty crazy. Mm. Well, and I would say, you know, I, again, I, I think one of my, in the new paradigm, to me, you design your ideal job. And the new paradigm toolkit are tools to help somebody do that. And so ultimately, to me, if, if you know, whatever this is with you, there, there's a, it's a next step of sort of either heading that way with you to help you get there, or you, you know, because you're one of the few people right now who've seen this particular tool, like outside of maybe 10 or 20 people, no one's even seen it, right? So yeah. you're the first person, one of the first person in, in a sense of just seeing the possibilities. Wow, I'm so honored. How did I get that? Well, because of Greg, because like what Greg represents to me is like another originator who has a, another body of work, but another sort of like, I see him as another originator in the, in the new paradigm and his idea of the library and his idea of free space. I love it. Like I, I, I intuitively sense that it is a, another big piece of the puzzle. So I'm, I, I'm sort of an architect looking for pieces of the puzzle to, uh, cause I have this language framework that is a, sort of like a language framework to connect into a software system that connects all the dots called the inflow matrix, information flowing in a matrix. And sort of like for the people, you know, by the people sort of thing. So I think we need to build intelligent AI that's good for us. Like there, there's a lot of this negative storylines and timelines around this, you know, negative AIs, but I think we're sort of nodes in the larger mind of God in a sense, and that we just software should be there to support us and to connect us just like what's happening right now. Yeah. And that, you know, if we have good intent and we actually start programming ourselves, we will create something very good for ourselves and for our communities. You know, we, we, we need to, we have to transform as a species and we have to come to grips with what technology is and how to use it. And we have to bring in ethics, you know, and Absolutely. I mean, that's what my entire life is about. And, and that is what your entire life is about. And that is what Greg's entire life is about. And, you know, when uh, this administration came up, those of us who were the kingpins, just ideologically, who are like the carriers, the keepers of these ideas, and wanting to put them forth into form, were just it was like a big wool blanket got flung over us. You know, we were just, Greg and I were building this project up and trying to run towards some launch. And then we suddenly just were like, well, whoa, what just happened, you know? Um, but, but the other thing I wanted to say was what you described is basically the dissolution of, the, of duality. It, it's no longer the left brain and the right brain. It's the network. And it's interesting because Buckminster Fuller's geodosic dome, like that has these, wow, a lot of things are connecting for me right now. So sorry as I stumble, but it has these like things that shoot out from it. It's not the normal linear construction. Mm. Everything, it's like, if you looked at the world as, a, as, a, as it is a globe, and it, it's a grid, right? It's a grid. What we have is a series of networks and what, okay, let me just backtrack. Here's just something I put together so that because I was listening in on this convent, it's a convention of American mayors who are trying to put forth um, solutions to, to climate change. And what you have is like, a country ahead of a country and then you've got states and then within those states you have mayors and mayors are the smaller connectors between the towns and if you look at it that way if you look at it like president we'll just use america when it's functioning when it's functioning let's put it that way you've got a, a federal and then you've got you know state and then you've got you know town city local and then 
the mayors can um, influence the schools, the college influences, the high school influences, the elementary school, you, you've got your grid, you've got a grid set up. And what we've done is we've just removed duality and we've created a network. And then besides create, you've got an ideology that creates systems and then you've got systems, um, with ideology systems, and then that cre and then that necessitates networks, so you can disseminate the systems, and then the networks. Um, oh shit! So networks. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not that my mind is blowing. So I'm just trying to look at, you know, you have your ideologies; they necessitate the creation of the systems to disseminate information about the systems you need networks that give you know give to each other and and, and then essentially you have act, actors the actions that the actors can take and all of that dispels this kind of duality it, it's uh, so what you described before to me i just saw the brain functioning in a very different way you were describing a non-dualistic brain mm -hmm. you know the way that you're thinking you're saying when you once you get beyond that compartmentalization that's acceptable to us that's so limiting every a lot of things get revealed um, anyway but look, sorry well for sure i mean uh, you know the yeah. for our species to jump from the dualistic thinking to systems thinking is the big jump right it's it, and then to truly understand how we're interconnected and then how do we you know each of us or as a community or as a nation how do we connect into that and that's yeah. You know, language is the big connector, right, deep down. And so how do we change our language structure so and link it to software and then link it to business design and then coordinate that? And that's at least, the, again, the new paradigm toolkit is looking at, you know, how do you help people learn, create, communicate, and heal? Those four things, learn, create, communicate, and heal. If you can teach and empower people with those, they're going to do well. Well, and, and, and also to remember that language is a tool. It's, it's, limit, it's limiting. And underneath all of the languaging and systeming and networking that we build is this inherent intrinsic connectivity. I mean, you're talking about trying to understand how we're connected or even why, we're, what, but aside from that, we are connected and so proceeding uh, with that, that we're trying to prove that connectivity. We're trying to pr prove what I call the benevolent net. We're trying to prove the benevolence of that connectivity. Not that it's here to destroy us. Mm. There's something benevolent trying to manifest in every aspect of our, our lives. If we would allow it, if we'd stop fighting mm. and, stop, and stop imposing dualistic thinking onto it so that we mm. can understand it you have just have to do better at knowing there's a there's more of the mystic in this i love the system but we have to remember that there's mystic in the system there's a mystic in the system <laughs> genie in the bottle and there's a genie in the bottle mm. yeah. okay so what do we do next what's the next step i don't know i just uh, i felt like you know my little idea bubble had <laughs> was it was uh belonged to you and um well i i guess you know i love the idea and uh, i think it will happen at some point yeah i i right now i'm sort of working on the website for the new paradigm toolkit and i'm working on sort of like what constitutes sort of the first move in the game with greg um I'm naturally sort of overwhelmed all the time with all the work I have to do um, just to keep up with what I work, what I'm creating. Yeah. And so with new people, it's kind of like, from my point of view, it's like I show things to people and if you know, they pick it up and run or they want to do something fine, but I, I have to sort of uh, gauge, you know, just, just gauge things, right? Like, I mean, the, um, you may get really excited, but, You've got a thousand other projects you're working on and that's just one idea and that's it fine or you go holy shit this is phenomenal and i i want to go do this with it and then you know i'll i'll sort of 
you know, I, 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 my, my, I want to empower people. I want to, I want the tool to go into the world and I want, you know, creators like yourself to go, Hey man, you know, let's do this. And you go do it and it gets done. Well, you, the, the reason why I wanted to shout out to you is that in one of your texts to me in, in messenger, you said, you know, eventually you want to invite people to, to play the game. Uh. And so this, this little tirade is kind of in response to your, suggestion that this, this is something that one could invite people to. Now, one of the things that I did see in terms of the Nantucket project, they have something called the Neighborhood Project. They're already doing this phenomenal thing where they'll get groups together and they have their own technology now. It's outside of Zoom. Um, if you go to the Nantucket project, you can become a neighbor. And essentially, they create groups, they show some media, and the groups meet in, in groups of 12. They're from across the country. My friend Tom has gone up and down the country talking to mostly conservatives in conservative states, talking about racism. He's got like a 30 minute film on that. They'll show that or they'll have a speaker come on. You can join any of these groups. And in the 12th, which is interesting because Greg and I created like the eight person forum where you come to the, the round table, you know, it's the same, it's a round table, basically, they, and, you know, we didn't invent the wheel here, it's a round table, yeah. so way back, so it's just getting that round table up and running again, and then because it's so intimate, there's not, there's differing of opinions, but nobody's like trying to wrestle each other down to the ground and kill each other, so what I thought was it's possible at some point for me to ask Tom to introduce the um, the quite you know I don't know what you call it the question oracle the re asks. remedy oracle I guess for now the remedy oracle. when when yeah when you lock certain things down it's not impossible for me to ask Tom to introduce it as a tool of uh, uh, because they're they're really like going into very difficult places with really difficult things and people are saying things that rip your heart out of your chest that they've experienced you know in terms of racism so uh finding places to apply your tool instead of just releasing it generally for sure would be a good application of the tool because it will immediately have specific outcomes remedies yeah definitely yeah so. so so i guess maybe perhaps the next step could be and I, I think i said that was for you to you know come up with some idea of why you bring the people together invite a certain you know maybe six people to come into a zoom and then we do the same thing we just kind of did yeah and introduce them to the tool uh generate it, have a conversation, maybe have two or three of them or something like that and see how it works kind of thing with more people, right? Absolutely. And also because because Greg and I always had the round table, we've had that going for like, you know, the idea of it, that we would have a certain topic. I mean, but there's, I'm not even seeing, um, I mean, I, I just think we should continue to find ways that the two parallel each other and can inform each other. That, the point I was trying to make before about, oh, this was the last word, the networks. So you got the ideology that creates the system that create the networks. And then the final piece is the bridge. The bridges have to be built between the networks so okay. they can share tools. Right. Really interesting because I couldn't grab my last thought, but that's it. It's that we cannot move forward together separately because we're trying to prove unity. Mm. so it's a contradiction in our very what what just happened did i lose you no nope. oh okay there's something weird is happening on my no, it's okay. okay so right since all of our goal is to prove you these are tools to, that prove unity unity prove our connectivity we can't move forward separately anymore so that the bridge between, that's why I see the geodesic dome, it's all about connectors. It's, you know, you mm. have strongholds that connect up, spokes of a wheel, right? Mm. And then 
uh, and then you got the wheel. But the wheel isn't just the main hub. It's, it depends upon the strength of the spokes. Mm. And then you can go. And so going and arriving at a new place in our evolution is the function of the wheel that <laughs> we want to move because we want to arrive at, we want to experience ourselves differently as the human race. And we want to arrive or we want to aim at a different place and experience ourselves differently. But in order to do that, we have to have a solid commitment to unity and moving forward and the spokes of the wheel, uh, everything has to be connected. So the last part of the network is the bridge between networks and massive tool sharing across the board. No reason why we can't use your tool in our round tables, why Tom can't use your tool in the Nantucket Project uh, neighborhood groups. And there's this tremendous like massive tool sharing. Oh yeah, and so there's this generosity which Greg embodies outrageously. He's very, um, even though we have egos, we're very aware that we want to connect with other people who have the big ideas too. So the sharing thing is a real alteration in, it's a displacement from egoic credit oriented thinking to sharing that creates free energy. Mm. Massive shift in, th that has to have immediate rewards and the immediate reward is where we feel good when we connect in this more intimate way. So I don't have any answers as to how to use your tool. I just had an idea about the cross sharing and that if we use it specifically for conflict resolution between you know opposing apparently opposing forces we'll have immediate outcomes mm. and so put, using the tool in more heightened situations rather than as a general like people use tarot mm. oh, this is kind of cool oh, i'll do it daily i'll do my daily but you know what if as soon as an issue arises, uh, we insert two people who are looking at something together, sharing their thoughts about it. Mm. And, and by the way, that we're not reinventing the wheel here either. Mediator, mediators know a lot of these tools already. They're using them to talk people off of roofs and hostage situations, you know. Mm. Well, I, uh, I think... I got to go right now, um, just to let you know. But I'm glad we spoke, and I, it's a next step. And I think we had a, a remedy come through, and I think it'll some of this, it sinks in. It takes time to sink in, and have other uh, things sort of ruminate inside ourselves and figure things out. So bring it into our pipes and smoking it. Yeah. Yeah, and and also it's it's good for you and I to establish some uh, some contact too. I mean, I'll just fill Greg in and definitely to TBC. Okay. Great. To see you again. I look forward to our next meeting and uh, have a lovely weekend. You too, honey. All right. Bye. See you. Bye.